Hey everybody, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the Dynamo List Clean node. Um, so there's, I've got a list in my to-dos, I use Microsoft to-dos to track like different video ideas. And I wanted to cover like various nodes um, that I've used before, but I wanted to get a better understanding uh, of them and I wanted to share that with you guys on on this channel uh, and the first one was this list dot clean node so uh, this one is pretty straightforward for the most part um, or at least for how I typically use it which is taking a list like this that may have nulls and empty lists and then cleaning those out and so uh, if we set the preserve indices to uh, false we can see that it cleans everything out um, there the thing that I wanted to talk about specifically with this was the uh, when you set this to true uh, for preserve indices and it gives you this it's kind of confusing uh, and why it returns certain things uh, and it returns nulls, but if there's like a, you know, if it's a list of nulls, then it returns just the null instance. And then if it's a, uh, if it's got nulls in it, uh, it's only going to remove the nulls at the end. And so, uh, and for empty lists, it just leaves them there. And so, um, unfortunately, there wasn't a ton on the internet, and I was looking at the code, and so I wasn't able to really figure out what the use case for this would be and I did try to create another one that's why I have a version 2 version 1 I was trying to create a use case but didn't really um, achieve that because I couldn't I've never would use um, preserve indices so I just didn't know of a good way to leverage that functionality and nothing that I found uh, described that. And I'll show you all of that stuff. And I've got also some pretty cool Python versions of it and then some other uh, uh, Python nodes as well that do a little bit um, different things. So, all right, so how to use the clean, the list.clean node. So um, we've got uh, two different lists here. Um, I think the only difference is, yeah, this one up here I put um, empty list, and then this one down here I didn't. And so uh, originally when I tested this, I just had this one, and then I added this list one and, and realized that some of my Python nodes weren't capturing the, the empty list. Uh, but if we pass this in, you know, we'll see that it returns... Uh, just a bunch of nulls. It looks almost the same, except for this one uh, has the list. So, or sorry, it has the empty list. Uh, and then if we set this, so by default, this is true. So if we hover over that input, we can see it's true. Uh, but we'll set this to false, plug it in, and we'll see it removes everything. So that's typically, well, really, the only way I use this node. And I'm sure typically how everybody else does as well. Um... And so, again, I don't really have any good instances, like any good workflows for why you would set this to true. I just really don't know. I, I tried to come up with some things, and I just couldn't. Um, I have a node here at the end, which kind of would be maybe a use case related to this, and I'll show you that in a minute. But first, just want, I wanted to show you this node here, the source code that was committed in the uh, Dynamo GitHub. So um, if we look at it here, that's what this is. And it was uh, submitted, I think, in yeah, 2015. So this is the code itself. So it's written you know, this way, and it, this hasn't changed as far as I know. This is the only commit I can find, and it's built to do what you saw there. So this, that's the way it's supposed to function, is when you have preserve indices on, and you have it set to true, that it 
returns lists like this. The only real difference in just not doing anything to the list is it does remove some nulls, which interestingly, like if we look at um, this here, so we'll see, uh, so the purpose of the clean method is clean data of nulls and empty list from a given list. So that makes sense, that's how I use it. Uh, the other one is provide an option to preserve the instances of the data such that some null, some nulls may not be filtered out. That's where I'm not entirely sure. I understand maybe the purpose of preserving indices so that you may not destroy a list structure, but I don't really get why you would remove some of the nulls and, and not others. Um, and there's really not re any good examples except for this fake example, which is similar to what I've got going. So um, these links that I'll show you will be um, available below so check out the description if you want to check these out and read them yourself um, also the dynamo dictionary there's nothing out here that describes how to to really use this um, and so for kind of for fun but also I think just is a nice way to see this stuff or see it in a different way uh, I wrote it in Python and so these should return um, the same list so you can see 17 and 17 it doesn't count the empty list um, by the way so like this one over here that just returns nulls we'll see it says 20 but these here are this Python uh, node should return everything that you see in this one it should function exactly the same so I looked at the C sharp code and then recreated this Python node however I haven't tested like every single thing so nesting a bunch of, of nulls or uh, nesting a bunch of empty lists to see how it they both function but it should function exactly like the list clean um, and so now if I take this out plug it in here we'll see that these are exactly the same so if we look at that index 0 it's got two nulls at the end so it removes the nulls at the end so when it in that um, in that commit it said that it removes some nulls and I assume it's referring to the uh, nulls that would happen to be at the end or if it's a list of nulls so this index 2 um, if we look at list two, we can see it's just a list of two nulls, and it's going to return an instance of the null, not a, a null within a list, but just null, a null instance. So that's kind of interesting. And then, um, so you can poke around in this if you like to see how it, it functions. It's essentially recreating the C sharp stuff that you saw in that commit. Um, so nothing really uh, important there because you can just, if you wanted this functionality, you could just use this list clean node and that's fine. Um, but I wanted to get a good grasp on what exactly was happening there and why maybe the thought process was to remove only some of the nulls. Um, this one here, what it does uh, is essentially the same thing as this except for if we pass in the empty list so if I take all of these out and I didn't mean to do that um, interesting functionality if you don't know if you grab the node like this one here the return null nulls you'll see there's a bunch of connectors into this one three and if I wanted to take this just that single one off I do shift <clears throat> and then select and then I can take that off if I want to take all of them off, I just got to make sure I don't have anything selected. And then what I can do is do shift, grab them, and that grabs all of them. All right, so uh, all this does is you can see here it returns nulls um, instead of the empty list. And I did that just to, 
trying to come up with some use cases like okay if i know know in this list where all of these empties or nulls are then i can maybe have a condition that catches that and does something uh, in that place so i don't want to remove the structure of the list because maybe the this is related to other elements and it passes into something and you know and so on down the script but you know i didn't want to ruin the structure and so that was one thought because uh, it's easier to manage your inputs um, and then your nulls uh, just as one object instead of having two, which is nulls and empty lists in this case. Plus, this um, is still going to remove the, um, so list one, if we look at list one, um, it's going to place the nulls for the empty list. However, it's going to remove nulls if they're at the end. So this one has empty list at the end. But if we, what's one that does? So, so it looks index uh, four. If we go down to four, we'll see the. right here so this one here uh, index 3 so that's yeah so it removed the null right after here um, and it still does the same for this one too so the null after that and so again I'm not sure why you would want to do that um, I couldn't think of a good use case and so that's where I created this last node that essentially does the same thing here except for it doesn't um, I have an input here because I didn't take it off I copied these nodes but this input really doesn't um, uh, do much except for uh, the empty list it just excludes or includes those however Really, the only way I could see maybe using this is if you use it as, is like a like a bull mask, like for your filter by bull mask, and so you would only return uh, booleans, and I don't really see a good reason to return empty list. So with this set, you can see it returns falses and trues. And let me do this real quick so you can see. Um, so uh, it falses for anything that isn't a null or empty list. So we can see false, true for null, false, and then uh, the rest are true. And so possibly what you can do from that, and this is a very simple example, but you could think maybe if you were working with duct elements and you were doing something to them and checking for a certain condition which is going to return a list like this of nulls and empties then what you could do is have this uh, have a you know a true false or, or boolean list to then pass into this if node to then pass in certain uh, variables for you know whatever that condition is that you're trying to trying to meet and so now we've got two and one, and um, what we can do from here is take this and plug it into to something else, possibly. So I, again, I don't know what a huge um, benefit this is. I don't know how often people really even use this uh, preserve indices and have it set to true. I'd be interested to know how you're using it, but I'm just wanting to share in case you've seen that before and didn't really understand it. I wanted to give you the resources, so all of those links will be in the description below, and then some examples of what's happening there with the code to possibly explain the thought pop process behind it. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, this sample, uh, or this script here, you can check it out. Um, in my GitHub, feel free to download it, use it, you know, however way you want. If you want to take these nodes and copy them into your own scripts, uh, go ahead and do that. The um, note down here, by the way, is just a reminder. I wanted to make sure to bring up that when you see this count number down here, it's not going to include empty list. 
And so that's why when we're returning nulls for everything, we're actually getting the full 20 values or the 20 count. Um, so just a heads up on that, those numbers are confusing. Um, but anyways, that's all I've got for this. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting and yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.